This is Falcon at the default. There's nothing loaded. What we have is the default multi and it has just one part in it. And so what is a multi? What is a part? A multi is a container. It's the host for multiple parts. And I'll show you this in a moment. So what is a part? A part is a host for a program or instrument. So basically we have different levels of abstraction here. So we have our multi, that multi can have different parts and each of these parts can host different programs or instruments. Let's see that. So first of all, I'm going to quickly show you and then we'll dive in and we'll get to understand how the UI works. So I'm going to select a preset from the Falcon factory uh, pack here and uh, let's just get this one. So what we have now is a loaded program that is running inside a part and that part is running inside a multi. Now if I'll just take another one of these programs and drop it here, we'll have two parts and these two parts are running inside a multi. So if I'm going to save this and I'll show you that also later, if I'm going to save this then everything will be saved as one um, structure and as one multi. And now when I'm playing We can only see the first part playing and this is because the second one is not receiving any MIDI information and we need to set that up. So here we have in each of these parts we have the input, the MIDI inputs and I can set them both to one, to channel one and now both of them will be playing together. So now let's talk about all the different areas of the UI. Let's get to know what is going on here and we'll dive in and we'll see how to create our own programs that can be loaded into parts. The user interface is divided into sections. We have a left sidebar to manage our parts. This is where we have the part view here, the part tab. We have tree view where we can see the levels the different levels of a program and we'll talk about this in this video and we also have a list view where we can go into the fine details of parts and programs. On the right side here we have a right sidebar which is more about browsing the different tools and elements. So the first tab here is a file browser. This is where we find our presets. We have a search we also have oscillators and in Falcon we have two kinds of oscillators, sample based and synthesis based. And as you can see there is a lot of choices here. We have different types of uh, samplers, we have different types of synthesis based oscillators, additive, we have analog and so on, even a wavetable and, and many other types. We have effects. We can use the effects in different levels of the program and I'll show you that. We also have multi-effects which takes um, several effects and put them together as one unit. We also have event processors like arpeggiators and MIDI players and we have modulations like envelopes and LFOs which we can use to manipulate and change every parameters uh, or any parameter of our program. Now let's get back to the basics here and I'm going to um, show you how a part looks like from the inside. So I'm going to remove this one. I'm just going to select this one, right click and delete part. Now um, every part has the same controls. You'll see that you have volume, you can set the octave and semitones here and you can pan it to the right, left, center and so on. 
Of course, we also can set the inputs and the outputs. So right now we are set to one. This means that this is going to receive, this part is going to receive uh, MIDI notes or MIDI information from channel one. If I have uh, several controllers, like several keyboards, then uh, I can select which part will be receiving information from which channel. And we also can uh, set the output. So I can actually have different parts sending uh, the sound, the audio to different outputs in my DAW and then uh, mix it uh, outside Falcon. And we also have um, mute and solo buttons here. So we'll get to know the parts controls even further during this video and other videos. Now, let's get to the center pane here. So in the center here, we can see the program that is loaded into this part. And this is the info tab where we actually have some controls and um, it's kind of a UI of an instrument. You can see uh, different, uh, different options that we can uh, use to manipulate and change the basic sound of this program. The Edit tab, this is the main place. This is where we actually do all the editing. This is where we actually build our sound engine. This is the program itself. And we also have another view for the effects, for the events, and for the modulators. Now, when we're looking at the Edit tab here, we'll see a lot of uh, elements or uh, layers here. And I'm, I'm saying layers, but layers means something specific in, um, in Falcon. So let's get to know this. First of all, we have the program level. This is the overruling, um, structure. This is our program, and as you can see, we have uh, we have our gain and uh, of overall gain, and we can set it to anything that we want. We have panning, and we have some other uh, elements like octaves and semitones that we can set, and we can also load specific. Uh, effects to this level. We, we see that we have some effects here and we can change the order just by dragging and dropping. So I can have my um, EQ after the reverb or the other way around. So I can just uh, flip that. Um, now, in addition, every time I click any of these elements, we'll see the user interface for that particular element. If it's a effect or modulator or maybe an event processor. So this is the level of the program. Now, some of the programs will have more than one layer, but e every program will have at least one layer. And so what is the meaning of layers? You could have different layers running different oscillators and it's like splitting the program into two paths and you can have something going on on one layer and something else running on another layer. So it's very um, versatile and very uh, complex on the other side. So, But you don't have to use it. It's only if you want to layer the sounds. And I'll show you how to use that very soon. And we also have key groups and oscillators. And it will be best for me to show you how this works from a blank multi. So let's go back to clear the multi and now everything is empty. There, there's nothing running here. Let's get started from scratch. Let's create our own program and we'll start from scratch. So you can go to the menu and clear multi and now we're back to the default and everything starts from a oscillator. So we need an oscillator. Let's go to oscillators and we can take a basic SOTUS oscillator. But in Falcon, everything is related to key groups. So we, we are starting with an oscillator that is coupled, we, well, basically it is mapped to a, a certain range of keys. And so let's go to mapping. We'll reveal our keyboard here and drag this oscillator on top of it. 
And as I drag down, I'm narrowing the selection, dragging up, we're widening the selection until we have everything. And now we have a key group. The key group tells the oscillators um, what to play. And I can have different oscillators respond to different key groups or different sections of my keyboard. And we'll see that in, further in the, in the video. So now let's see where is my oscillator. It is hiding here at this level, at the oscillator level. And I have only one oscillator. This is, this is it. This is the analog oscillator and I can play something. So now I can also open up my key group and what we see here is that we have one key group, there's nothing um, else, and that key group contains an amp envelope. This is the amp envelope. And if you don't know what an envelope is, we'll cover that in uh, future videos. And we have one oscillator, which is mapped to a key group. So we can also look at this from the tree view. In the tree view, I can see my, uh, my part here. This is my part. That part contains one program or running one program that has one layer. That layer has one key group and that key group is related to an analog oscillator. So in order for us to understand the idea of key groups and layers and parts, let's see three different examples. I'm going to close this one and I'm going to show you something that is related to parts. So here we have two parts and let's play that. As you can see, this first part is mapped to key group one. When I'm selecting the second part, you'll see that it is mapped also to key group one. And reason is that each part is a separate entity. They play together, but they are completely separated. So if I'm defining a key group in one part, it doesn't really uh, affect a key group of another part. Now, if I'll just go and reveal things in the tree view, we'll get uh, to know what exactly is going on in part one and part two. So in part one, we can see that we have a program that is called Udi Guitar Part One. And this is a program that I've created and it contains some effects here at the program level. And we can see that here. Spark verb and maximizer. This is at the program level. This is the top level. And then we have a layer that contains one key group. And that key group is uh, basically running a plug synthesizer. And what we can see is that this key group doesn't span all over my keyboard. Now, let's go to part two. So I can click here the, do the drop down and see what's going on in part two. And now everything that we see in the center pane here reflects part two. In part two, I have loaded Udi Guitar Part Two program. Again, contains uh, two uh, effects at the program level. We have one layer and that layer is running one key group with one oscillator, which is a plug oscillator. And now we, we can play both of them and, uh, and both of these parts, but they are related to different areas of my keyboard. So when I'm playing the low notes, I'll get part two to play. And when I'm playing the high notes here, then I'll have the part one. So let's see. And I can see that also here in the parts. And uh, that's the idea here. Now let's see another example where I'm using the the same sounds, but I'll do this with different key groups inside one part. So I'm going to close this one and I'm going to select this example. And here you can see that I, I, I have just one part. Let's go to the tree view and we can see that I have this uh, program loaded into part one. It's just one program. And again, I have two effects at the program level. I have one layer, but now we can see that I have two different 
key groups. And when I'm just selecting this layer, I can see the overlapping area here and I can play this again. Okay, and I, I can just focus myself on a specific key group and see exactly what's happening in each of these key groups. But everything is contained in one layer. So this is the idea behind key groups. I can have different oscillators responding to different keys in my keyboard using the mapping, the, the key groups. So this is what's happening in this example. And as you can see, again, I, I have just one layer, layer one. Let's see the third example. And here I have, again, one part, and that part will have two layers. And we can see that the loaded program here, Udi Guitar Layers, again, we have the effects and we have two layers. But now I have one key group in each layer. And when I'm focusing myself here on key group one, I'll see the mapping for this oscillator. And when I'm focusing on the other key group, I'll see the, the other uh, oscillator and, and mapping. And again, it's the same sounds. So let's sum up what we've learned so far. We have a multi. The multi is the container, the top level container that contains different parts. A part can run a program, which is an instrument, and each part can have different layers. And in each layer, I can have different key groups, and each key group can trigger the notes of a different oscillator. And in the next videos, we'll dive further into the structure and the user interface of Falcon. I'll see you there.